Please pray with me. Startle us, O God, with your word. Silence in us any voice but your own. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. As Victor lifted up today, the elders and deacons and foundation trustees met for most of the day yesterday, training, eating together, building relationships, and making plans for the church's future. Today, we are grateful for their leadership and worship, but every day, we are grateful for all of you and the love and energy and imagination you put into serving God through serving this church and the world. The scripture passage this morning was not cherry-picked by me for such an occasion. Rather, it was one of the passages from our lectionary reading, and the lectionary, for those of you who aren't familiar, is a pre-selected collection of readings from the Bible that many churches follow, including our own, most of the time. And it follows the liturgical calendar in a three-year cycle so that we get exposed to different parts of the Bible. So it is perhaps by divine intervention that on this day, when we celebrate the priesthood of all believers, that this passage lifts up for us that every part of the body of Christ is needed and necessary. This concept of the priesthood of all believers was introduced, or more accurately, given new emphasis during the 16th century Protestant Reformation. It upholds that every individual, no matter what they do for a living, no matter what titles they hold or what letters follow their name, has direct access to God without the need of a priest or a pastor to be your go-between. So if you want to pray to God, if you want to confess or praise God, you don't need me or Victor or Cal to do that on your behalf. Of course, there is something special about coming together and worshiping as a community. But the point is, you don't need me to get to God. God is present and accessible. And to every single person in this sanctuary and beyond. That's the first part of what it means for the priesthood of all believers. The second part, in my opinion, is just as or perhaps even more important. And that is every individual shares the responsibility of ministry. No one person or even one committee or board can fully do the work left for us by the only head of the church, Jesus Christ. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Teresa of Avila's poem on the body of Christ. She writes, Christ has no body on earth but yours, no feet but yours, no hands but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks with compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Friends, we are the body of Christ. And we need each other to do what God has called us to do. You play a vital role in ensuring that God's love is shared with one another and with the world. Now, black church tradition does what I'm about to do quite often, and I learned to preach from a black pastor from Mississippi. So we're just going to try it here and see how it goes. All right? Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you belong here and we need you. Go on. All right, good. There's more. <laughs> Tell them, you, definitely all of you, you have gifts I don't have. I don't have. All right, good. And now say, I have gifts you don't have.
And finally, finally, let's say this together. Together, we are the body of Christ. Together. All right, not bad. Not bad. Well done. We are the body of Christ, and all the members of the body, though many, are one. Now, I was reading through this passage this week and thinking about how it lifts up each part of the body as needed and necessary and indispensable. And on some level, I completely agree, because each and every one of you does matter. We cannot do the work of God in the same way without you. Some of you are great at art or music, and this place needs you. Some of you are great with spreadsheets and numbers, and this place desperately needs you. <laughs> Some of you are great with words and writing, and this place needs you. Some of you can smile and light up a room. Some of you can get angry and shed light on where there is great injustice. We need all of that. We need all of you. But then I thought of human bodies and how, yes, it is true that e when even one tiny part suffers, like have you ever stubbed a toe or gotten a hangnail, it really does hurt and the rest of your body. But also how resilient the human body is. Praise God. I think of people like Tammy Duckworth, senator from Illinois. Before running for office, Duckworth served as a US Army helicopter pilot in the Iraq War and lost both of her legs and some mobility in her right arm as a result. In spite of that, or I don't know, perhaps because of that, she became the first Asian American woman elected to Congress in Illinois, the first woman with a disability to be elected to Congress, the first female double amputee in the Senate, and get this, the first senator to give birth while in office. So I think of Tammy Duckworth and how her body has undergone so much trauma and loss, and yet how it has held and given birth to new life, and how it is still whole and full and faithful in so many ways. Or I think of our very own Lou Grosso, Victor's husband. As most of you know, Lou is blind, and he is fabulous. That conjunction there is important. It's not Lou is blind, but he is fabulous. It is Lou is blind and he is fabulous. He is a complete and whole human being without his sight, and he is doing things in the world I only wish I could be doing. These are the kinds of bodies I want the body of Christ to be. Bodies that intimately know loss and pain. Bodies that are familiar with change. And bodies that are resilient and rise again in new and amazing ways. After all, the body of Christ, as we read about it in the Gospels, are crucified, dead, and buried. And on the third day, it rose again. So church body of Christ. Do not be afraid of loss. Do not be afraid of change. Do not be even afraid of death. We've already been through it all, and resurrection is the promise. This particular body, Calvary Presbyterian Church, has gone through all kinds of loss in just these past few years. We have lost pastors through resignation and through death. We have lost beloved members and friends. We have even lost some traditions and ways of being church that we hold dear. 
it sometimes feels like our body will never be whole again. And maybe it won't, not in the same way. It will always bear the scars and pains of what we have endured. But we are all broken in some way, and as Leonard Cohen sings, there is a crack in everything. That's Friends, the true meaning of this passage from Corinthians isn't that losing any one part of the body is wholly devastating or unrecoverable. Paul himself left the church in Corinth. That's why he's writing to them, because he's no longer there. He was once there, but is no longer. So they were familiar with change and death and loss. That was all a part of being the body of Christ. We need not hold so unable to let go as changes and transitions inevitably happen in the life of the church. Grieve. Yes, of course, grieve. But grief and acknowledging it and dealing with it allows us to move forward rather than to stay stuck. The point of this passage is this. Unity is possible in the midst of diversity. In fact, diversity is necessary for us to be the body of Christ. Paul is teaching us how to be one without being the same, how to have unity without uniformity, acceptance without assimilation, solidarity without sameness, because at the core of our community is not uniformity, but love. All of this talk of being the body of Christ is a preamble to 1 Corinthians 13, the great passage of, go home and read it. Love is what holds us together. Love is what will see us through. Love is what makes us one. Love is what makes us the body of Christ. Through love, we can be united in service to one another and in service to God and the world. We can be one in mission, one in call, as we set out to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it, Paul writes. So friends, let us love fiercely. Let us love boldly. And let us let love take root in us, transforming us to transform the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.